what's up guys welcome back to the channel so today i wanted to have a little discussion right something that dc and marvel fans alike could be passionate about um so a lot of you a lot of my earlier followers know that i am a huge comic book fan um in the early days of this channel you guys could go back and see the videos of all of my marvel legends and dt multiverse action figures and um different action figures from different genres of games shows and movies my posters behind me um the boys and the black panther wakanda for everyone so it's gonna really pain me to really talk about this because i'm a huge fan of the dc property um i like them even more than the marvel property but i am a superhero fan my passion for both properties and my likes for both properties go deeper than which one's more successful and then, and nowadays a lot of normies a lot of people that just watch it to watch it have their favorites simply because of the success of of the brand and they feel that's the definitive comic book property i'm here to tell you no it's not but we're not going to be talking about that today we're going to be talking about dc and the turmoil that this property company comic book genre comic book uh multiverse com this comic book brand is is in right so now the, this 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 is where it really pains me because i love dc dc has <laughs> has been one of my favorite properties since i was introduced to comic books and the reason why i like it that much more than marvel is simply because dc is a darker and more realistic take on on superheroes and i can relate a little more to the gritty world being that i'm from jersey and gotham city and metropolis is basically like new york and new jersey um right across the bay or river from each other so it's it's a little more relatable to me that these characters these these gods alike it's relatable to me because i see myself in some of these characters you know what i mean now it pains me to have to talk bad about dc but dc lately as a brand as a whole as a company warner brothers and dc has been extremely disappointing for the better part of almost 20 years i think they started really going downhill and hitting that up and down motion i think that started in 1997 with batman and robin It's more comical. 1997's Batman was more comical. Um, some people have it as one of their favorites. I mean, personally, I didn't like it. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Like Michael Keaton's Batman's better. And the Batman Forever, I think, was a soft reboot of, of the Keaton Batman movies. I was born in 96, so I'm not going to really know the depth of those films like that but at the time those keaton batman movies were miles ahead of what marvel was doing at that time because i think the first marvel movie to come out was blade the blade with wesley snipes the trilogy of blade movies the last one the last blade movie i eh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guilty pleasure but dc had marvel beat for a long time marvel got their footing with blade blade literally started the marvel cinematic universe if you want to really want to be technical about it but dc had them beat with the christopher reeves bat, uh, superman movies with the michael keaton batman movies and and all of the spinoffs the supergirls and 
all of these movies that the steel movie with Shaq, which was a DC movie at the time. Don't get me started. But Marvel really, uh, DC really had Marvel beat. Now you may be wondering where it went wrong. Batman and Robin is where it went wrong. Then a little while after that, they had some other DC movies come out. Catwoman with Holly Berry, which me personally, I liked. I didn't really put that in the DC universe. I, 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 I saw more of an Elseworlds story. I, I, there was no ties to anything DC in that movie except for maybe the cat god and all of that but you had all of these movies in between the movies and the trilogies that I'm about to talk about that really missed the mark with with DC then Warner Brothers decided to bring in Christopher not Christopher Reeves Jesus Christ Christopher Nolan to direct his Dark Knight trilogy. Now, that's where it really took off for DC because Christopher Nolan had a more realistic take on what a Batman would, how a Batman would operate in, in the world we're living in currently, right? More realistic, more, I wouldn't even say gritty. It was just more, more realistic. And at the time, I was on the pier. This is before they shot um, The Dark Knight Rises. I was at the pier in New York. And I have pictures in my, my Google's, uh, Google Photos. But I saw the bat wing and the bat tank, the Batmobile tanks that was spray painted with the camo and all that. And I was like, yo, this is a real... This is a real thing. Like I, I stood there for a, a while, and at that point, I definitively knew that I wanted to go into filmmaking, to direct, because it's awesome to be around stuff like that. You see it in person, and then boom, it's on, it's on the big screen for millions of people to see. So I was just, I was kind of starstruck, in a way. I don't get starstruck, but I was kind of starstruck. So I was just sitting there like, whoa. And then, and then the movies came out, and I absolutely loved them. The movies were good, enjoyable, made sense. They, they, they were. It was a self-contained world within its own world. The movies, there was continuity between all three movies. They all made sense. And then at the end of the last movie, we thought the world was gonna expand for that DC because we were introduced to Robin or Dick Grayson or whatever you want to say we were introduced to that character and we thought it'd go somewhere and there were rumblings that Christopher Nolan was supposed to continue on that universe and it, it just never happened for some reason probably because of money and 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 stuff of that nature and you know, people not being happy with salaries or numbers not being where they're supposed to be and stuff like that. And this all started in 2005, believe it or not. 2005 is when Christopher Nolan's um, Batman movies begin, right? We had... Brandon Ross Superman movie that came out that predates or falls I think falls right there with the Batman the the Batman trilogy falls right there with it um now that Superman movie it's I, it's a love hate relationship as far as that movie goes with me and I'm gonna tell you why because there's sometimes where I'm just sitting and I'm thinking I'm like damn that would be a good movie to just sit and watch i i'll sit and watch it you know i'll enjoy it and then there'll be some times where this movie's just like yeah they definitely i can see where they copied christopher nolan's superman because they wanted someone to imitate imitate what was great at one point and me personally i think 
especially with as time went on and you know technologies advanced and stuff we needed something different i'm i'm more in line with the darker universe that Zack snyder introduced and those movies do have their issues don't get me wrong and i am a snyder head i do like Zack snyder as a person and a director and i i have his dark shot shirt on here if you can't see it those movies had their issues the the christopher nolan movies had their issues but 2000 that that 2000 them early 2000s to mid 2000s for those movies were phenomenal it was it was a good time to be a dc fan it was stuff to talk about and then and then and then something happened see we didn't get a continuation of nolan's dark knight trilogy no they were going to do a superman movie set in that universe no Zack Snyder was brought on to do a Superman movie and at the time I think it was set in Nolan's universe Zack Snyder was brought on to do a Superman movie and boom the Snyderverse was started now this is mid 2000s right Man of Steel with Henry Cavill grossed at box office almost $670 million. Box office. It took $225 million to make. Huge success. The Nolan series, all three movies equaled out to a billion dollars. A little over a billion dollars equaled out box office wise to almost a billion dollars or a little over a billion dollars man it still came in 400 million dollars less than what all three nolan movies did and you can sit here and say definitively the nolan movies were better but let's let's get one thing straight each director has a right to have his own vision for these 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 characters as long as they're following some semblance of what made the character the character I, I feel right batman v superman comes out and this is the theatrical cut we're talking about the weaker one i hated that one because you could tell it was chopped up you could tell it wasn't arranged how it was supposed to be arranged even in the theater you it was just like okay there was something there that was important that was taken out but man is uh batman v superman the theatrical cut 872.7 million dollars box office those two movies alone were well over a billion dollars 250 million to make they gave him 25 more 25 million more than what he previously had around there yeah 25 25 million more boom then we get batman v superman the ultimate edition which is my favorite three hours had stuff that was missing from the theatrical cut that made sense to the continuity of these characters in the story everybody went berserk oh yeah this is definitely the better version this is definitely following in line with what Zack Snyder had in store for the DCU. I don't know why they thought the theatrical was better. Well, fuck me neither, right? So we 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 was like we want more. At this time, it was an either you love Zack Snyder or you hate Zack, Zack Snyder, and people didn't really have a good reason for hating him. It was just because they didn't agree with the direction that he was taking these movies. And in my opinion, DC is a much darker universe than Marvel is. And we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. But boom! Rumblings of Zack Snyder's Justice League or Justice League Part 1 because it was supposed to be a two-parter. We hear rumblings. We see set images we see leaked set Im images we have castings for cyborg we have castings for victor uh, victor stone's dad 
wow, this is actually happening. Dark Side gets casted. Ray Porter voices Dark Side. Uh, Sierra Hines is Steppenwolf. Oh my God, the comic books. We about to see it on the big screen, right? That's that boom. That's what we all like. Oh my God. He's filming in the middle of filming. Tragedy strikes his family. His daughter unfortunately loses her life at her own hands. So Mr. Snyder decided to leave the project so he could tend to his family, which is understandable, commandable, because some people wouldn't even do that. But DC found this as a time to basically fire the man because they was giving him hell with the last two movies. And his his vision was definitively the more successful visions, which is confusing to me from a business standpoint. Because you like we're sitting in this room. We see that, boom, the numbers for our vis version aren't that good. And then, boom, when his version comes out, wow, well, they're a little better. Maybe we should maybe we should let him do his thing. Did they pause the production of the movie? Did, no. What did they do? They brought in a Marvel director, and I'm going to call him a Marvel director because Josh Wheaton all of his humor is Marvel. Everything that we know is Marvel and, and he's done Buffy the Vampire Sl Slayer, Angel, all of that. I know him more from Marvel because of his controversies with DC. He comes in, basically cuts it up, recolors it, rewrites it, re-edits it, and it has to be one of the worst movies I have ever seen. And for a long time, DC executives was like, yep. This fits into the continuity. This is what we want. This is our Justice League movie. And you're going to have it whether you like it or not. You you can, shut the, you can shut the front door. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. They started losing money. They lost so much money on that production. They lost a sh... And, and, and you'll see articles with, oh, Zack Snyder's Justice League calls DC, blah, 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 blah. If they would have left it alone originally... Put it on the shelf for a little while. Let this man tend to his family like he was supposed to. And then came back and continued production. It wouldn't have nearly costed as much. Because they had to bring in Josh Reedon. They had to bring everybody back for reshoots. They had to re-edit. Rewrite. Basically. Uh, um, um, Re-advertise. That all costed. That costed money there. And then it was not successful. The We Want. The Snyder Cut started trending on twitter we had a voice everybody started raising listen let these artists create we want to see what this man's creating the universe that this guys when i tell you the snyderverse came out crash the dc uh crash crash the hbo max or max servers for for their um app because i remember i was there i took off of work that day to watch that four hour cut there was two versions that released it was we, uh, justice league gray and then the zack snyder's justice league justice league and when i tell you all four hours did not feel like four hours to me i was mad as hell because i wanted more i wanted and then i even went as far as to go and watch 2017's justice league and then watch that and then i watched so many videos on the comparisons so many videos. say what you want say what you want about Zack snyder about anything that he's done but this man has a passion that is unmatched he'll stay close to the co comic book counterparts he'll just put a twist on it his 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 his, his cinematography looks good Anything with practical and special effects he does looks good. He has a passion, a drive. He shot m some scenes for Justice League in his driveway. What? He did that. There's a passion for that. You bring in someone to rewrite 
someone's whole movie because you aren't happy with the product that was being given at a given time and dc has had this problem with trying to catch up with marvel for a very long time because they saw that the properties with marvel were a little more successful or the movies with marvel were more successful but here's the thing here's the difference marvel did it right marvel did it right they planned out their universe they had movies they had tv shows they had games they had comics they followed the comics they follow what laid the foundation for these um movies and dc saw that success and immediately started panicking and wanted to play catch up but why 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 not just let what's gonna happen why not let the inevitable happen right you were bound for some success it was gonna happen but you didn't want it to happen when it was supposed to happen so now your audience is tired fast forward to last year peter safran and james gunn was brought on as co-ceos for dc something that should have happened years ago dc should have been its own separate entity from warner brothers dc brought in a marvel director James Gunn is known for a lot of other things, a lot of other great things on top of that. He's not just known for the three Guardians of the Galaxy movies that he's done. He, he also filmed Peacemaker on uh, HBO Max. He also filmed The Suicide Squad, which were pretty successful. They, they got pretty good reviews. But I'm concerned because James Gunn has openly told actors not to follow the source material for the characters that they'll be playing. He introduces lesser known characters. He introduces characters that no one really knows about. So, of course, people are going to be concerned. You know, I don't have any faith in what what James Gunn is, is coming out with. Honestly, I'm, I'm really concerned. I don't want the jokes or the corny jokes or the sexual jokes. And it. I just want a good movie i want a good movie that i can sit back and watch and enjoy and talk about with my friends or get on the platform and talk about it with y'all but i'm scared i'm i'm scared and that last guardians of the galaxy let me tell you something that that shit was good it was good it was good okay it, i'm i the man is talented but he's weird i'm just gonna say it he's weird he is weird now we have to deal with him putting all of his friends in these roles it is it, 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 it's supposed to be a reset you know he's supposed to wipe the slate clean start again doesn't seem like that's gonna happen he's been caught and caught in a couple of lies already blue beetle was supposed to be the start of his dcu then the flash was supposed to reset it to his dcu what what's happening we still got aquaman coming out the Batman, uh, Matt Reeves' Batman universe is an Elseworlds series, but everything was supposed to be in one continuity. Games, books, comics, shows was all, it was all supposed to be one straight line. What's a bunch of different branches? No one knows what's happening. DC, you need to get your stuff together. Because I'm t I, I stopped buying your comic books. I don't pay attention to your movies. Didn't watch The Flash. Didn't watch Blue Beetle. The last uh, DC movie I watched was Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I watched it religiously. Shazam Fury of the Gods was disgusting. It was a lot different. That director left. He didn't want to come back to superhero movies. Because of y'all. You're the problem. Warner Brothers is the problem. The people running the show is the problem. So fix it or you're 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 done. You're Marvel's following right behind y'all right now, may I add. But y'all got to straighten up, man. I I'm not investing my money until your stuff gets better. Simple as that. The next movie we have coming out is is Aquaman. James Gunn is writing Superman and is not focused on any other DC properties or it's confusing it's still confusing he has no idea what he's doing i'm sorry he he's a director producer screenwriter sometimes actor the man has no idea what he's doing peter saffron we have i, I haven't heard nothing from him i think he's just sitting back and, and 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 letting james do his thing but it's concerning 
You guys stay tuned. Subscribe, share with your friends and family. Let me know what you think of all of this crazy crap. And let me know what side you, you were on as far as DC and Marvel and why. I've, I've, I've stuck to more independent comics like Image Comics and all of that. I can't take these big uh, companies serious anymore. It, it's tiring. But you guys have a blessed one. You guys stay safe. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, I'm just done. I'm, I'm tired. All right, guys. Bye.